Let's bring in our panel. Brad Blakeman is a Republican strategist who served in the George W. Bush White House. And Al Motter is a Democratic strategist. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks. I appreciate nice it. Here. Okay, so Al, you and I had this conversation. I, I do want to start with you because we saw the president tweet in part, um, you know, he, he mentioned health care and tax cuts in the works. At the same time, we see a lot of criticism when it comes to the Senate, really the fact that it's being drafted in secrecy and there's been no evidence in that bill coming forward anytime soon. So, so what are we going to see this week? Well, I think it's really problematic from a political perspective, Liz. You've got Republicans drafting a bill that even half their caucus hasn't seen, and they're telling Americans it's going to be great for them. And then their own Congressional Budget Office, on the other hand, says it's going to take away 23 million people's health care. So I don't know how that's going to work for them politically. Okay, but I want to, I want to bring in Brad, because at the same time they say, listen, we've been working on this for the past seven years. Well, here's, here's what's happening. It's a legislative process. The House passed their bill, and now it goes to the Senate. It doesn't mean the Senate is going to take up their bill. As a matter of fact, they're not. They're going to form their own bill. And then once the Senate bill is passed, there's going to be a conference. And both bills are going to be discussed. And then we'll have a bill finally to be voted on and hopefully passed and signed by the president. Okay, I mean, but Brad, you know, I, okay, I have a question for you. So we, we heard Health and Human Services Secretary Tom Price. He was interviewed um, by Senator Durbin just a, a few days ago. And not even he has seen any evidence of, of the draft of any legislation. Does that make you nervous from a standpoint that, that, yes, I know this is how they draft legislation, but it also can be done quite differently? No, it doesn't make me nervous at all. As a matter of fact, I know from uh, colleagues of mine on the Hill what's going on, and that is the relevant committees in the Senate are working very hard. And then once the committees <laughs> are satisfied with the bill that's drafted, it's going to be shared with other Republicans and shared with Democrats. Look, it would be great to get Democratic votes uh, on, on our bill, something that Democrats did not seek or want from a Republicans when they jammed their bill through. Remember that you had to pass it before you knew it was in it. That's just flatly not true. That. That's just flatly okay. not true. Well, I'm quoting Leader Pelosi, Al, the Speaker of the House at the time. I, I, I do want to bring you in because we heard uh, from the Senate mi Minority Leader Chuck Schumer last week. He drafted a, a letter to uh, Mitch McConnell, the Majority Leader, obviously asking that he, he wanted to have a more, a more robust debate. But that's not really how the Democratic Democrats did it. So did the Republicans well, have to have that responsibility? I mean, to be fair, Liz, what happened the last time when Obamacare passed is there were hearings. There were markups. Republicans offered hundreds of amendments in the Senate. Brad calls it a legislative process. This is legislative malpractice. Eighty-seven senators have no idea what's in this bill. That's not a process. That's hiding the facts from the American people and from their own colleagues to rush something through. He says there's going to be a conference. There's not going to be a conference. The Senate's going to pass something under reconciliation and in secret. Then the House is going to have to decide, do we pass this or not? There's no working together here. There's no bipartisan. Okay, so you bring up a sort of a perfect segue for me, and I want to bring you in, Brad, because are, are we wasting our time talking about bringing in Democrats here? Should we be talking about the fact that this bill needs to be satisfying the most conservative senators to the more moderate, like Senator McCaskill perhaps, and, and the Senator Rand Pauls. I mean, they have very different viewpoints on what this bill should look like, especially when it comes to Medicaid expansion. I think Republicans make a mistake if we don't try, at least in earnest and in good faith, to bring Democrats in. Democrats should want uh, to replace and repeal Obamacare because it's the disaster that they created. We're giving them a way out. But we're in power. We control the House, we control the Senate, and we control the White House. It's, it's our obligation. It was our promise that was made in 2016 that we, we would do this. Now, we can do it alone or we can do it with Democrats. My advice is never give up on, on the uh, ability to seek bipartisan support. All right, Al, I want, I want to give you the last word, and I also sort of want to get your prediction on what we may see in, in the next week or two, because we've heard a lot of hopes that they want to get something passed uh, or at least drafted by the 4th of July. I think you're going to see the Democrats with this speech process trying to delay things and really shed a broad light on what's actually going on in the Senate. But ultimately, my bet is the Republicans will be successful at jamming through something, telling people it's good for them, but actually taking away millions of people's health care, which is politically problematic. All right. Al Motter, Brad Blakeman, gentlemen, thank you so much. We'll see thank if you. your predictions come true. Sure. We'll see what happens this week. Thank, thank you, you so much.